So if you see your pipeline or the Plex as an instrument like a guitar and the project as the chords you play, there's different things you can do by adding your configuration files. For example, you can play a chord like this. Or you can break it down like this. Or you can go completely crazy like this. Hello and welcome, my name is Alex and I will show you how to set up configuration files for the open source pipeline Plex. So let's go into our Plex repository and here we have the data where all the configuration files are stored. One thing before we start to go in deeper into this topic, I have to say that all the configuration files are project based so you always will overwrite them. The main purpose for that is so we don't have a stack system and in the end don't understand why specific configurations are overwritten and something are not. So you always have the configuration files at one layer, which is completely different to all the scripts which can be layered based. So if you go into Plex Stator, you will find the pipeline YAML, which will be triggered at the start of starting a software, for example. One thing we have here is the variable project. It defines which configuration data we will use for the project. So here it's default, so we will use default. The next one is the path variable, which says how we stack up our pipeline. So we use, for example, the this variable, and it defines uh, the location of this file. And it's also in, in the lowest point, so it means there's nothing underneath it. So it will just use the information it has in this current path and nothing else. So if you want to have this layered, layered approach of pipelining, you need to move it up and have something below that. So let's move this above here. So now it will look into the current folder you will ne definitely have to have all the configuration files, but in terms of all the scripts and plugins, if you can't find it in this current folder, it will go to the project and search for all the Maya uh, scripts and plugins and library functions and images there. And the same thing, for example, if you want to play around and um, test things out, you can, you can do the same and put it up. And so, for example, you're current at, uh, at the sandbox level and override the sandbox level and can can use all the layers uh, below and test things out before you push something into your project or even in the root files. So this is the way um, how you can uh, use the player pipeline approach. Um, but you can also override the configuration files. So at the moment we use the project default configuration files, but what we can also do, for example, if we uh, copy one of the configuration files in our current login, for example, our Richter in my case, and um, use this here, change this here. So from now on, if the user data is true, we will override everything in the, in the project with our user configuration. So we overwrite there now project.yaml. So we will use our custom project.yaml and um, have all the customizations there. Sometimes you need this kind of stuff when you work on specific tasks or you, you have for specific terms of time. Um, but you can also uh, block this kind of thing if you write down here um, false. If I can write false. And so now it will always use the project data and never use the user data. So it's an opportunity to have a more layered approach in terms of um, configurations. So if you go into project YAML, um, we have of course the name, which is mainly for menus. And so you know where you are. The path, it's the main root path of your project, the resolution, the FPS, and now we have all the main paths you have um, from pre-production to, of course, assets and shots. 
and it will use the, the main path uh, variable to add up your assets, for example. So it will be your assets will be at d slash project slash 30 assets. So then will be like status. So we have a work and publish status and how it's called work and publish. Um, you also have your repository if you want to write um, issues into um, GitHub or, or things like that or other repositories and want to write a re report scripts for that, this allows you. We have uh, help, so um, if you press help where your, your um, web browser is guiding you. So for example, uh, the main uh, help is Plex Wiki, but I can also give him IRUtil as an information and he will guide me to the IRUtil help. The next one is the software YAML where we have at first the default like file format code. So what's MA? It's Maya ASCII. What's MB? It's Maya Binary. We have next one is the software, like we start here with Maya. Then which version do we use? Which path do we use so we create here a path um, with the version variable also so we don't have to rewrite every time we change the version multiple times i also use here a joint function which allows you to combine strings with variables so we have now a string adding a variable to that and then ending with a string so it's an option how to uh, edit uh, yaml files the next one is the start um, variable, how to start it here. For example, we also add a file flag. So it allows you to start Maya with a specific file. Render and render path. And then of course the environment, which is one of the most important. So we have a Python path, for example, here. You can add as many environment paths as you want and then add specific paths to that. So here again is another, it's the environment first um, function which will take, for example, the software path environment, take just the newest path from there and add it to Python path. And the same thing as join, you can add multiple um, strings to that. So it will take um, the, the newest software path and add scripts to that and add this to Python path. And of course, as you see, we have multiple environments here, Maya script path, Maya plugin path, shelf path, image path, and whatnot. And here again, also another function we have is the environment, which will take all the image paths you have in your environment and add to every one of them um, the here software slash Maya string. So it will take all the environment paths from image path and add one by one to that and add the whole bunch to the image path. The next one is the menu, which allows you to create generic menus per project. So you have um, here like your sub menus, your breaks and things like that. And how it looks in the final result is this. So if we combine um, Plex as a sub menu and add this two points, make a break, do utils and do a rip report and help. And here's everything defined for your custom generic menu. You have to use the specific software like additions, for example, menu item, but the rest is just will be created by Plex itself. And last but not least are the settings where you can set up specific um, settings for the software. And what follows are also Nuke, um, Houdini, uh, 3ds Max, and even um, software like AV. So next will be the script YAML, where you can define specific informations per script. So you, it allows you on one side uh, to say how to start it even, um, without always knowing all the commands, imports, and whatnot. Uh, you can just define it here and uh, everyone who wants to use it will just use the script YAML start variable of the script. And of course you can add specific features for per project. Like for example, what's the so shortcut for that? How can I use that? What should it, what should it ignore? But um, so if you, if you write a script, you can outsource specific information and allow um, the user and the project to overwrite them and change them to your, their needs. And the same thing applies of course to the style YAML 
which also allows, allows you to uh, set a project style, for example, or uh, specific styles for uh, specific scripts, which is an outsourcing way of using um, styles and um, like project uh, lookups. And of course here also um, the Houdini files where for example we have the main menu master XML um, which needs to be outsourced so it is also in the data so you can define here your Houdini menu. So this is the basic lookup into all the um, configuration files of Plex and the main idea is you write a script and you outsource as many information as you can to end configuration files so it's changeable and customizable for every project. And this is also the main idea of Plex itself. It, so it can be customized as much as it can per project and per user and it will be used in a different way for everyone. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next videos. Goodbye. Thank you.